Welcome back everybody. In this video, we're going to talk about the net advantage to leasing or the NAL. And in this video, we're going to start getting more technical and coming up with an answer of whether we should buy or lease an asset. So far, we've kept things very general, but now we're going to get more specific into coming up with a decision. So to do this, let's maybe start off by listing the cash flows that are associated with both options. So let's say that we're buying an asset. So what cash flows are associated with buying an asset? Well, obviously, we have to pay the initial investment. Let's just call it an investment. Basically, the price of the asset, we're going to have to spend money to buy it. And that's going to be a negative cash flow to us. Now, if we buy an asset and we use it for business purposes, then we can depreciate the asset and then claim that depreciation expense on our taxes. And more specifically, that depreciation is called CCA. So we receive the CCA tax shield that basically lowers our taxes. So that ends up being a positive cash flow to us. Now, since we own the asset, we bought the asset, when we are finished using it, there may also be some kind of salvage value involved. So we'll be able to sell the asset potentially for some kind of value when we are done using it. And that will be a positive cash flow to us. And basically, these three components here represent all of the cash flows that are associated with buying an asset. Now, what about the leasing option? What are the cash flows associated with that? Well, if you think about it, there's only one cash flow associated with it. It's basically the lease payments that we have to make. Now, the lease payments, as long as they're being used for or the asset is being used for business purposes, we can deduct the lease payments on our taxes. So we take them on an after tax basis. So the only cash flow that we have to worry about with the leasing option is the after tax lease payments. So basically whatever the lease payment is multiplied by one minus T and that is a negative cash flow. So since we have the cash flows associated with both options, both buying an asset and leasing an asset, what we can do is if we're presented with a scenario, we can find what the net present value is of all of these cash flows here for buying an asset, find what the net present value is of all of the cash flows for leasing an asset, compare the net present values, and then take whichever one is higher. So let's do an example to illustrate how this works. So let's say a company needs a machine that costs 720,000 and has the 30% CCA rate. It will be worth 50,000 in six years. They can lease it for $150,000 per year. If the tax rate is 40% and the pre-tax cost of debt is 7%, should they lease or buy. Now, one thing that I haven't mentioned where now is probably a good time to do so is the discount rate you use whenever you're doing a leasing problem, you use the after tax cost of debt to present value or future value any cash flows. And I'm not gonna go into too much detail of why that is. From a higher level, basically, when you're leasing an asset, that's very similar to taking on debt and buying the asset. Hence why we use the cost of debt and because lease payments are tax deductible, we have to take that uh, cost of debt on an after tax basis. But you don't really need to know the intuition. What you just need to remember, the discount rate you always use is the after tax cost of debt. So notice how we are given the pre-tax cost of debt. That's 7%. So to get the after tax cost of debt, we have to multiply that 7% by one minus the tax rate. And the tax rate given is 40%. So one minus 0.4, we convert that 40% into decimals. So that uh, bracket ends up being 0.6, 7% times 0.6 gives us 4.2%. So that there is the discount rate we're gonna use in this problem. So now let's get into describing the cash flows that are associated with each option of whether we lease the machine or buy the machine. So let's start off with buying the machine. These are the three cash flows that we described before. 
So the investment in the machine, we're gonna have to pay for the machine today if we buy it. So it costs 720,000, so that's gonna be a negative cash flow of $720,000 today. However, we also get the value of the salvage at the end. And there is a salvage value in six years of 50,000. So that's a positive cash flow and that's happening in six years. And then we have to find what the CCA tax shield is. Now, as far as the present value of the tax shield, we're going to have to use that big formula that we use in the capital budgeting chapter, unfortunately. So this is it here. I wrote it out with all of the parameters and put it in. So you may have to go back to capital budgeting and review this formula. So the one thing I wanna mention is that the discount rate that you're using is that after tax cost of debt still, that 4.2%. So notice how 4.2% is inputted everywhere in the formula. And then we have to input the cost of the machine, 720,000, the CCA rate, 30%, tax rate, 40%. And uh, this machine is being used for six years. So we put that time right there. And when you end up inputting that in your calculator, you get $233,833.90. So that is the present value of the CCA tax shield. And if you remember, CCA reduces our taxes. So that is a positive cash flow for us. Hence why this is a positive number. So now that we have all of the cash flows associated with buying the uh, asset or buying the machine, Let's find what the net present value of all of these are. So what we have to do, so the net present value of buying, we have to pretty much take all of these and discount them to time zero and then find the net value of all of them. Well, notice how the investment and the CC tax shield, they're already in time zero because the investment would happen today. We would buy the machine today so that would be a negative cash flow of 720,000 that happens today. This CC tax shield here, this value that we got from the big formula, that gives you the present value of the CC tax shield. So that's the present value, that's the value of the CC tax shield today. So that would be plus uh, 200, uh, $233,833.90. And then the salvage value is happening in six years. So what we have to do is we have to take that salvage value of 50,000 and then we have to discount it by the after-tax cost of debt of 4.2%. Uh, so we would divide it by 1 plus 0.042 or 1.042 to the power of six to get that present value of the salvage today. So when you net all of that out, when you get that present value of the salvage, then you add the investment, add the CCA tax shield, you end up getting a net present value of negative $447,103.27. So that there represents the net present value of the buying option. Now let's move on to the leasing option. So the leasing option, if you remember, the only cash flow associated with that is the after-tax lease payment. Well, we're making a lease payment of $150,000 per year. Now, it's not mentioned whether it happens at the beginning of the year or the end of the year. Usually, they will mention it, but if they don't mention it, always assume it's at the end of the year. So, we're making a lease payment of $150,000 at the end of each year, but notice how it's also not mentioned whether it's after tax or before tax. And if that's not mentioned, then you always assume it's before tax, and we need the after tax lease payment. So we would take 150,000 and we would multiply it by one minus the tax rate of 0 0.4. So 150,000 times 0 0.6, which is what that bracket would end up being, gives us 90,000. So that there represents the after-tax lease payment per year. But notice how this payment is going to happen for six years. So if we want to find the net present value of this whole option, of the whole leasing option, then we have to take the present value of all six $90,000 payments that are going to happen because we're going to lease this machine for six years. So it's an annuity. We have to find the present value of an annuity. So we can input 
the variables in the financial calculator, PV, we're finding, so we'll put a question mark there. Future value is zero. The payment is the after-tax lease payment of 90,000. And then our I would be the discount rate. I actually erased it. It's 4.2%, the after-tax cost of debt. So I is 4.2, and then it's happening for six years. Now, as I mentioned, these payments are happening at the end of each year, so you wanna make sure your calculator is in end mode. However, if in the question it mentions that the lease payments are happening at the beginning of each period, then you would put your calculator in BGN mode. So when you input all those variables and you solve for that present value of the annuity, you end up getting negative $468,736. So that represents the present value of all of the after-tax lease payments, the six after-tax lease payments that are happening. So that there, because the after-tax lease payments are the only cash flows associated with the leasing option, that there also represents the net present value of the leasing option. So now comparing that net present value of leasing versus the net present value of buying, which one has the higher MPV? Well, notice how both MPVs are negative and they'll always be negative. The net present value of buying, net present value of leasing will always be negative. So you take the one that costs the lease. And between these two numbers, the one that costs the lease is the net present value of buying. It has the higher MPV. So should they lease or buy the machine? They should buy the machine because buying the machine has a higher net present value or it has the lower cost. Now, another common way that is used to solve these types of questions is with something called the net advantage to leasing. That's actually what this video is called. So your prof will probably introduce this way and you'll probably see it in your respective textbook. And it's very simple. The net advantage to leasing is basically the net present value of the leasing option that we just found minus the net present value of the buying option. And if the net, as, uh, the net advantage to leasing is greater than zero, then we lease the asset. And that makes sense because if the net present value of the leasing option is greater than the net present value of the buying option, then this whole expression here is going to end up being positive. This number is greater than this one hence why we're going to lease the asset. If the net uh, advantage to leasing is equal to zero, that means the net present value of the leasing option is equal to the net present value of the buying option. Subtracting two equal values gives you zero and hence you're indifferent. You don't care whether you lease or buy the asset. And if the net advantage to leasing is less than zero, then you're going to buy the asset because that means the net present value of the buying is going to be greater than the net present value of the leasing. So a smaller number minus a bigger number gives us a negative number, hence why when that NAL is less than zero, we buy the asset. So when you input everything for this question for that net advantage to leasing, net present value of leasing goes here, and then we're subtracting the net present value of the buying, make sure the net present uh, value of the buying you put in brackets because it's going to be negative so these two negatives will turn into a positive so when you end up netting these numbers out you end up getting negative twenty one thousand six hundred and thirty two dollars and seventy three cents so that is the net advantage to leasing for this machine because it's negative we're going to buy the machine we're not going to lease it and notice how that's the same conclusion that we came to in the previous method when we found the net present value of the leasing and the net present value of the buying separately and then just compared them like that. Now another thing we can do is we can take this net advantage to leasing formula and break it down into a little bit more detail and you're probably going to see your textbook doing this. So we know the net present value of the leasing option is just the present value of all of the after-tax lease payments and those are negative cash flows, hence why we put a negative there. And then we're going to subtract the net present value of the buying option, so that's in brackets here. And the three components for the net present value of the buying is the investment in the machine, that's a negative cash flow. Then we have the present value of the CCA, that's a positive cash flow. And then we have the present value, the salvage value, 
which is also a positive cash flow. So to simplify this formula a little bit, if we bring this negative inside the bracket, notice how this investment will turn positive, this present value of CCA will turn negative, and then this present value of salvage will turn negative as well. And then if we rearrange everything to make it look nicer, we end up getting the net uh, advantage to leasing formula being the investment minus the present value of the after-tax lease payments minus the present value of the CCA tax yield minus the present value of the salvage. So if we take that new formula for the net advantage to leasing applied to this question, we have the investment, 720000 minus the present value of the after-tax lease payments. We found that to be $468,736 minus the present value of the CCA tax yield. We found that to be $233,000. $833.90 minus the present value of the salvage, which is $39,062.83. So we didn't really go into details about this too much. Basically, if you remember, what we did was we took the salvage value of $50,000 and discounted it for six years at that discount rate of 4.2%. Another way you can get this number is uh, just inputting the variables in your calculator. So the future value would be 50,000. The I would be 4.2. The N would be six payment. There's no other cash flows that are happening. And then if you solve for that present value, you would end up getting that value right there. So when you net everything out, you end up getting that same net advantage to leasing figure that we got before of negative $21,632.73. Since that net advantage to leasing is negative, we end up buying the machine. So this formula here is the one that you're going to be seeing and using mostly. However, I didn't want to introduce it right away. I sort of wanted to introduce it gradually so you understand how we get this formula. Basically, it's the net present value of leasing an asset minus the net present value of buying. And then when we input all the details, we get this formula right here, which is pretty specific. So this is the formula you're usually going to be using for this type of question. And then depending on what your net advantage to leasing figure is, you'll know whether you should lease or buy the asset. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.